You are listening to the R Podcast, episode 26. Welcome to episode 26 of the Art Podcast. It is back and I have a lot of interesting content to share. Um, this is actually the first episode of our coverage of the recently uh, concluded 2019 Art Studio Conference. It was a smashing success. I had so many great conversations um, and luckily a few of those has been recorded, hence you will hear that on these episodes. Um, but so many connections and lots of experiences that, um, not to sound too big about this, but they're, they're going to change my life actually, in terms of how I use our daily in my daily work. And even in my uh, personal projects, just so many good things to share. Um, and I also want to obviously thanks to all of you that are listening for the first time. Welcome. And especially for those that have stuck with me along the way through my, uh, my layoffs here and there. And there's actually a lot I can share about what I've learned in that in that time off. Um, I'm not sure if it lends itself very well to an audio segment here, but I may save that to write in a new article because I have now started a new article section on the R Podcast site, which if you haven't visited before, it's r-podcast.org. And there is now a new article section. You can click the link at the top of the of the index page. And I have one article on there that kind of takes you behind the scenes on how I produce the podcast, which actually is kind of evolving as I speak, so I'll probably update it. But this is a place where I'm planning to share content that may be too difficult to share in like my audio portion of the episodes. Um, I expect it to be supplements to each episode and perhaps even some non R related content because, heck, I'm making the site and blog down. I might as well have a blog type portion to the site. And plus, I, I do enjoy writing too. So it's not just my voice. I like to write some stuff as well. So stay tuned for some of that. And I have um, information on how you can get up to date with the feed on that, on that section as well as the, the actual podcast itself at r-podcast.org slash subscribe. So as I mentioned, I have a ton to unpack from the R Studio conference. And I wore, I, I use the expression probably too much, but I wore multiple hats at this one. And I don't even have time in one episode to talk about all of them. In fact, I'll be saving my experience and you know learnings from my presentation about shiny modules um, for one of the upcoming episodes, because I have a ton to say about that. Um, but I wanted to lead off this episode with sharing my experience that took place in the first portion of my visit to the conference, and that was my participation in the Advanced R Markdown Workshop. So for those that are unaware, um, at each of the R Studio conferences, they have a series of workshops that we can optionally um, join. Of course, it's not for you. So, <laughs> but I think in this case, I am very happy with my choice um, on many levels. And let let I'll be honest, there was a lot of tough choices to choose because there's lots of topics that I'm interested in. But in the end, I thought learning more about how our Markdown and Knitter and Pandoc and all these excellent packages that I'll mention in a little bit how they all fit together and how you can get started effectively with them is the thing that I need the most for both my personal stuff and some work stuff. So I thought it was the right choice. So once I sign up for it, I'm busy, you know, prepping for my actual presentation, you know, things are going fine. And then here comes the, the really interesting part that really showcases um, you've heard this, you've heard me mention this many times, but the welcoming nature of the R community 
So I saw a tweet um, from J.D. Long, who's a very prominent member of the community, um, absolutely brilliant guy, and I'm glad I met him face-to-face at this conference. He had a tweet around, I believe, September, and he was saying that for those of you that are producing you know, Microsoft-type reports, whether they're Word documents or PowerPoint presentations, um, he really um, put a nice plug for... The, um, David Gohel's officer package, along with some of the other packages he's made in, in that general area, and he said that they're they're definitely worth checking out. And I fully agree with him. Um, actually, officer has been a huge part of some um, you might call them automation projects at work um, last year, and and it was the glue that made everything fit together. So that that tweet was awesome. Of course, I I really agreed with him. And then um, one of the uh, workshop participants uh, named Stas, he had replied back asking if Iwe Sia, who, um, of course, is author of our uh, our Markdown Knitter. In fact, he we jokingly call him Iwe Down because he's got almost all of the package names slash down uh, (laughs) authoring there. Anyway, someone at Stas had uh, tweeted Eway about would Officer or these types of packages be covered at the Advance R Markdown Workshop. So I saw this one night. Um, I typically scrape kind of the R stats um, hashtag on Twitter for some nuggets, which there are things I see there that don't get publicized elsewhere. So even though you still have to kind of sift through some noise here and there, it, it's definitely worth it if you just take a little bit of time to look at it. So I found this tweet, and I'm thinking to myself, hmm, should I reply or not? Um, because um, I hope, for those of you that are new or, or have listened to me before, I love sharing what I know. I, I want to help people learn more how to use R effectively in their daily work or even just their, their hobby. So... I thought, well, I have some stuff to share. Why not take a crack at this? So I replied back saying, you know, I've been using Officer and Work Projects, and I'd be happy to talk about it. And I, I asked Eway if he was interested. I'll, to be frank, I didn't expect anything from it. But Eway replied back. Um, he emailed me and then said, hey, we, we'd love to have it. Would you like to do it? And I'm like, yeah, I'd love to. So... <laughs> So through that um, experience, I really I became a TA for the workshop, which was it's awesome actually. Um, so then now I knew I was going to have to prepare some materials for this. So as I was as the conference starting to roll around, I started to think about the best way to talk about this, and I knew I only had um, either half hour or forty five minutes, so I wanted to make sure the content was interesting. So. We'll get to that in a little bit, but then I, I arrive at the conference, and again, to the welcoming nature of the art community and especially our studio, um, Iwe invited me to the, um, the TA kind of uh, meeting that they had on that Monday that I arrived, and also invited me to join them for dinner, which was, again... He didn't have to do that, but um, he, he, he is very generous. He is very kind, and he even talked to me a bit afterwards that he wanted to have a little diversity in this workshop in the sense that there, there may be more than one solution to tackle you know, uh, a workflow issue or things like that. So um, he was happy to have me talk about officers. So, so I go to this uh, meeting, um, this uh, TA meeting, and I met – the rest of uh, rest of the um, instruct the fellow instructor for this workshop, uh, Allison Hill. Um, she's part of the education team at our studio, and it was very funny as we were going around the room introducing ourselves. And I mentioned I'm a late addition to the TA um, for the Advanced Hour Markdown Workshop, and she was like, "Hey, that's good. I'm 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 didn't know this." So we we talked and got got lined up with the materials and everything, but. I, but I also met the rest of the TAs. Um, I'll, I'll go through them shortly. Um, first, um, Hao Xu. Um, he is actually the author of the very powerful Cable Extra package. And also a funny story, he is um, also a fellow teammate of the R Weekly project. Um, you've heard me mention R Weekly before if you haven't seen it. 
definitely check out our weekly um, dot, dot org. And what's really funny about this is at the time we, we knew each other sounded familiar in terms of the names and we couldn't put our finger on it. And then I can't remember at what conversation this was, but I mentioned something about the R Weekly stickers and I was handing them out. And he said, hey, I think I sent you those stickers. And I'm like, you're exactly right. I knew you were, your name sounded familiar. So it was just one of those things where <laughs> I should have thought about it when I first heard his name, but it just wasn't quite ringing a bell yet. But that was awesome to meet him face to face. He's a really smart guy. And Hal, if you're listening, I really enjoy talking with you and I look forward to <clears throat> um, talking with you again, of course, um, on Slack or other things, but hopefully we can meet again at one of these conferences. Uh, um, some of the other TAs included uh, Jennifer Thompson. She's a biostatistician at Vanderbilt, and she's also uh, pretty prevalent in the community. And um, Gianna Gu McKellen, she's a data scientist at the Beef Cattle Institute at, at Kansas State, and she actually led the topic of Learn R which is an R package that lets you kind of design an interactive set of exercises to teach content um, all using R Markdown and Shiny on the back end. Uh, she's very smart, very humble, and uh, we had a lot of good conversations about Shiny and everything else. And she actually was very nice to take some pictures while I was presenting my uh, little thing about Officer so, and my other presentation. So, Gianna, thank you so much for doing that. And I also want to give a shout out to uh, Thomas Mock, who works in the, as a customer success uh, uh, team at R Studio. He helped answer a lot of questions about using the R Studio cloud instance that um, had been set up beforehand, and some other miscellaneous issues. So he was very helpful at the workshop. So it was a pleasure to meet you as well, Thomas, and definitely hope our paths can cross again. One little fun fact about Thomas is he actually founded the Tidy Tuesdays initiative, which is really cool. Okay, so I've rambled a bit. I want to now share some nuggets about the workshop itself. First, again, huge, huge, um, you know, praise and accolades, whatever you want to call it, for the team for being very um, diligent to set up the materials beforehand, especially the infrastructure, so that the students could connect to a uh, basically a cloud instance of our studio server and gave them lots of instructions about what they, how to get connected of all that. And they actually, for the course website, they used um, Blogdown. Of course, that's cool in itself. But they used this really nice uh, theme called Academic. And um, Allison had put on GitHub this uh, repo called Project Kickstarter. Not to be confused with Kickstarter, the you know the product service funding thing, but this is a great way to, if you want to get this kind of site up and running very quickly. It's got complete instructions, and this site just looks fantastic. So I will put the link to the to the workshop site in the show notes. You can find those at r-podcast.org/slash26. You'll definitely wanna you wanna check out that site. It's got it's just laid out very well, very organized. You can even embed videos in there as well. Lots, lots of nuggets on that. So now I'll mention the, um, the various nuggets I got from, from the talks. And day one was kind of like the, the day of showcasing all these great packages in the R Markdown kind of ecosystem. Um, we covered, um, well, not me. Allison actually was the MVP of this day. She who had most of the sessions and really um, organized the, the tutorials very nicely between exercises and material, really kept the students engaged. So the one that I was, um, I was paying attention to all of them, but the one I took the most nuggets from was her, um, t- her, uh, her tutorial on the Sharingan package, which if you're not aware, that's another framework to create slides entirely in our markdown. Admittedly, it's one of the more complex slide making engines because you can customize almost everything about it via CSS or JavaScript. It is using the remark.js uh, JavaScript framework under the hood. And now again, the course website will have links to all of the slides that Allison and the other members of the team presented. But I wanna share a few nuggets here that are gonna really help me um, create more effective slides in the future. So one of these is that you can actually name your slides in the in essence the pre the pre um, 
I don't know what you call it, meta information about each slide. And what's nice about that is then you can make a direct link to a slide and quickly navigate that by just putting the name of that slide at the end of your slide's URL. So this is a great way to kind of be prospective about knowing you have to jump back to a slide if you get questions or things like that. Really nice little nugget. And again, it's these are features that have been built in um, for a while. It's just now we're there, Allison has been spreading the awareness of this in her tutorial. She also showed a, a very um, nice, uh, nice sections on inserting images and background images, which you have a lot of customization there. So she has some nice examples along with highlighting code and the different styles that you can use for that. And then being able to insert tables from various packages like DT and from the knitter function cable and little gotchas to watch out for there and how to make better looking plots based on one of the knitter options for fig.retina, which I had not used before, but now I'm gonna make sure my plots look better. And then efficiently putting code and the plot side by side so you don't duplicate your, your code along the way. And other little nuggets like adding logos to your slides, customization available to you for making title slides, and be able to deploy to the Netlify service if you want to quickly host them uh, free of charge. So there's a lot, and I've been using Share again a bit for both um, some work stuff and the personal stuff that I'll get to in a little bit. Um, so lots of great content there. And that, of course, was not the only thing. She also covered blog down, book down, uh, flex dashboard, and then um, and Gianna also covered Learn R, as I mentioned earlier, a very nice practical um, uh, example that she showed. And then at the end of day one, it was my turn to talk about Officer, which I really wasn't sure how this was going to be received because, again, it's not in the R Markdown ecosystem. But I had a hunch that there are going to be people like me in, in the workshop you know, audience that, for better or worse, have to make PowerPoint slides. So I try to make my example kind of fun, but I was upfront about the fact that I'm not the biggest fan of PowerPoint, <laughs> but I actually use Sharingan to make my slides about Officer, which I guess has some irony in there. But I wanted to challenge myself a little bit because sometimes the best way to learn is to try something out for a real project and see how it goes. And so I use Sharingan with this um, custom ninjutsu or shinobi theme that has been uh, created by Emmy Tanaka, um, absolutely brilliant uh, statistician. Um, and I actually have a collaboration in the works, maybe the work of her on another project. Um, but anyway, I used her theme. So I wanted to make this look different and again, kind of challenge myself along the way. So I, I talked for a half hour about Officer and I really spun this as the workflow that I use for my projects where I was given a PowerPoint template from, say, a colleague, and I had to make sure that I found a way to automate populating content to that template, of course, all based in R and adhering to all the you know font sizes, layouts, and all that. So in my slides, which I'll have links to in, in the show notes, I mentioned how I would look at this template and then use some of the awesome functions in Officer to like import that layout information and then the functions that we typically use to add content to each of those placeholders whether it's text or images or other things like that to be fun i i went to my retro roots and i kind of used an example from my uh 8-bit uh glory days of uh, video gaming <laughs> i'm i'm a bit biased i love the mega man series if you're not familiar with that it, it was awesome back then you know had a little hiccups here and there and in, in the er, in the later days but um, I, I showed an example where I made this kind of funny looking uh, template in PowerPoint with kind of Mega Man images and stuff. And I showed how you could use Officer to populate a few elements in there. And then to really um, show my workflow in action, I mentioned how I use this a lot in Shiny applications to automate kind of using a web form to grab, you know, information from the user. And then they hit this button to basically get the PowerPoint with all that content filled out. And so I went really retro with this. I used the uh, Nessie package uh, made by Colin Fay, who I actually met at the conference for the first time. And I have a lot to say about insights I learned from him in my in one of my future episodes. 
but I use that to kind of make this retro looking shiny app for this Mega Man example. And that was well received as well. Even Ihue said he really enjoyed that. So I, I didn't make people fall asleep. That was the best part. It was a long day before that. And I wanted to make sure I gave him some kind of fun to look. It was a ton of fun to, to be a part of that. And again, the workshop was just immensely uh, well, well run. And we tried our best to answer all the questions. Um, Allison really made herself available whenever she could. That was just day one. So day two is when Ihue really took us under the covers of our markdown and Pandoc and Knitter in particular. Lots of interesting things um, to share on that. Albeit some of it I'm still processing because he, he, he definitely took the advanced word uh, to heart. It was advanced content. Um, two little nuggets that I learned that I'll, that will be useful for me, um, especially in, in some projects, is the fact that when you render a document in our markdown, you can actually supply an environment parameter in case you don't want to use like the global environment or the environment that, that function is being called in. And you want to use some other custom environment to get your objects and things like that. So that was really neat. And then also, if you have like really long text output, he demonstrated um, a use case of the knitter hook functionality to make sure that you truncate that output so it doesn't like bleed all over the page or anything like that. Those are just two little examples. There is a ton more that he covered. In fact, I think he had like 90 some slides in his in all of his uh, his tutorial on that second day. And then also on day two, that's when Hao Shu had talked about his cable extra package going under the covers on that one to show how XML and the XML2 package is used to help lay out the content, dealing with LaTeX behind the scenes, and also showed some early prototypes of combining his cable extra package with a new package in the kind of table making space called GT. You're going to hear much more about that in one of my upcoming episodes. Got some exciting uh, information to share there. So yeah, by that point, um, I think, yeah, that was about it for day two. But Ewe took most of that material for day two. From what I could tell, um, just talking to the students, every the feedback was very positive. They learned a lot of interesting things. It more importantly is going to get them a great starting point to tar- start sharing their R content, whether it's like sharing tutorials th- to fellow um, colleagues at work or starting a blog or, you know, writing a presentation. There's now a way to do almost anything <laughs> with our markdown. It just kind of boggles my mind how powerful it is. Um, so I think the workshop was a really successful um, I, I definitely hope they do it again. I know Allison and Eway got a lot of insights for next time. They've got a GitHub repo or they've put some issues out there of things that were encountered. But I think for the first time doing an advanced R markdown workshop, really awesome stuff. I, I mean, two days, they packed a whole bunch in it. So it was, it was definitely well worth the price of admission, if, if you want to use that cliche. So if, if I haven't said enough, I want to send a huge thank you to Ihue, Allison, um, Hal, Jennifer, Jana um, for letting me be a part of that experience from both the student perspective and the kind of assistance or TA perspective. It was very cool to, to get behind the scenes on that. So kudos to all of you. You did an awesome job and I, I certainly hope that it happens again. And I'm Throwing it out there. I'm happy to help again at any time, no matter what, no matter what the material is. So, Okay, so that, that's going to kind of cover my experience on the workshop. And now for something really fun. As you know, when I join, when I um, attend our studio conferences like this, I love connecting with, with members of the community that I've been interacting with online, whether it's in GitHub or Twitter or things like that. And, of course, I'm a podcast host. And this is a great opportunity to have both the co-host of Not So Standard Deviations, uh, Hillary Parker, as well as the co-host of the relatively new podcast called Credibly Curious, uh, Nick Tierney. We were all three of us were at the conference, so we thought it'd be really fun to do this uh, crossover episode where we kind of share our thoughts about the conference and and other things where we want to see our go in the future. So. Enough of me talking about this. 
Let's listen to our podcast crossover conversation with Hillary Parker and Nick Tierney. Here we go. All right. So my name is Nick Tierney. I'm a researcher out at Monash University in Australia. And um, yeah, I'm really happy to be here. And you are the host of the... Oh, yeah. Of, uh, the co-host of Credibly Curious with Saskia Freitag. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. The little Ask Tats podcast. Very good. Cool. And I'm Hillary Parker, um, co-host of Not So Standard Deviations and a data scientist at Stitch Fix. Yep. And I am Eric Nance, a host of the R podcast. So this is a vet, we got all three of us in the yeah, same room. Yeah, good is crossover awesome. episode. Crossover. Yep. That's how we do it. So well, we're, st- we're in day one, obviously. We've seen some great keynotes. Let's just get you first your impressions on how things are going and what have you been learning so far? Yeah. No, it's been really fun. The... I've been thinking a lot about the energy of this conference and the energy of the, um, like our, I feel like our studio has a really interesting energy and you get the sense that it's a bunch of people who are just kind of having fun and really love coding. Um, and so, yeah, I feel like that's permeating <laughs> the scene a lot. And I think there's a lot of podcast listeners in general here. So that's pretty fun too. Oh, it is. Yeah, I know. Right. And there's like, I recognize that voice. I'm like, Oh, I hope in good ways. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I get that too. It's, okay, it's good. I'm not kind the only of surreal. One. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Cool, cool. What do you think, Nick? Yeah, well, um, I really enjoyed Joe's keynote um, on on Shani. So that was nice, just to have like a, a good like. I don't really actually use Shani much, but the way he described how to profile and fix things was really neat. Yep. And yeah, I feel like he did a really good job of like of telling that story effectively. Like I didn't actually even really notice that an hour had been up, whereas I feel like sometimes like for like a keynote talk, you can feel like you're like okay, and now we're at the halfway point, and now we're at like you know. Whereas his just seemed like a really consistent story that was really it was really easy to follow. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, the conference is huge. I'm like, it's a little bit overwhelming. Like, sort of, I don't know that like you're like at your table and you're like, oh, there's a few people, and then you look up and it's like it's like one of those scenes in a movie where like it keeps going. Um, but yeah, it's just like 1,700 people. So yeah, that that blew my mind. And I've been fortunate. I've been at each one of these up to this point. But yeah, the the vibe is just you've seen the growth exponentially yeah. growing. Yeah, absolutely. Now, one thing I wanted to ask both of you about is you have experience at some of the other conferences, right? And I've, unfortunately, although I'm, it's on my bucket list, so to speak, to go to use R eventually. But what, how does this compare to some of the R conferences you've been to, wherever there are even not so R? Really? Yeah, I mean, I think the vibe is is definitely different. Um, use R has much more of an academic vibe. Um, mm-hmm. So there's definitely... Like Hadley gave the keynote at the Stanford user and there was definitely people who were like not into the tidy verts in the audience who were asking questions afterwards. So I feel like here there's um I mean, everyone who's coming to this, I mean, a bunch of the sessions are from our studio engineers and, you know, sure. like a keynote on sure. like a product, right? Mm-hmm. So I think that as a result, people you kind of like know everyone's on the exact same page, um, which is is really fun. I mean, I think there's a lot of value to conferences where there's people on different pages and there's a little bit more kind of diversity of the tooling and stuff. But I don't know. At the same time, it makes it really fun to have everyone on the same page and like super excited about the same thing. So I think that um, that's the biggest difference I can think of. And then when you get to the really big conferences, like the joint statistical meetings, which obviously isn't an R conference anymore, mm-hmm. but um, for that, it's just so big. I mean, talk about overwhelming and, you know, I think that like there's so many people giving talks, it's really hard to keep up with things. So absolutely, I like the three track. I think that's the good number of tracks. Anything more than that, you would start to really get FOMO. But I hear I yeah. show up FOMO a little bit right now. Actually. Yeah, <laughs> no, totally. So, yep. so yeah, a different vibe. And I think, you know, obviously if you weren't a big R Studio user, you probably wouldn't love this conference. But, <laughs> um, but yeah, I think, and I think they do a good job of mixing the more technical and not even technical, but like R Studio kind of feature development versus more general stuff. So very cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What are your thoughts, Nick? Yeah. yeah, I mean, like very, um, yeah, like I don't know what to add, I guess. But I, I feel like for me, the difference is, yeah, just like the number of tracks. So like, like, mm-hmm. uh, like user normally has five or six on the past it has, and so it can be quite like, um, and also just really diverse. It's like. At user, like you are using R just for like literally anything, and so then they like like and then you give a talk about that. Whereas this is a little bit more like, um, you know, like the invited speakers. It's like there's not that many, you know. So it's just um, yeah, and um, and I think that all of the talks I went to last year at um, at our studio conf, like all of them are really well presented and very like refined and very good. Um, 
Whereas like at Uzar, like not to say the quality wasn't the same, but it was just like, um, like you just have like, like a more diverse group of people, I guess. Um, and yeah, one thing that is really cool that's happening now and it seems to be a trend is that our conferences are all recorded. So at Uzar last year, all of the talks are on YouTube. That helps reduce which the is, FOMO a little bit. <laughs> yeah, no, it's like so good. Um, and yeah, but I, I guess in terms of the vibe, like the Uzar is like, you can use R for anything. And then this is definitely more about like, our studio products and what they're doing and that sort of thing which is like their conference you know they have more um of that like going on which you like you wouldn't really see at, at user say absolutely but um yeah no it's it's great though like i really enjoyed so hadley had this great thing where he said the pac-man rule which is not a rule i've heard of but like you stand in a group so that you leave one side open so someone can join i thought that was really nice i was like that's a nice way yeah to talk about that and yeah, it was just also nice to have, you know, he's such a figurehead and it was just nice to have him be like, here's the rule, you know? And it's like, yeah. He also said something that I really enjoy, which is that a question has to be a single sentence and end with a question mark. <laughs> <laughs> which I thought was great. Yeah, uh, right, yeah. right. But yeah. Absolutely. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll get back to attending the talks in a bit. But uh, my last question for both of you is, obviously, R has seen tremendous growth in its own ecosystem. We've used it widely in academia and industry, you name it. I know, Hill, you come from industry and, and, and Nick, you're more from the academic side with your roots. So what are some things that you kind of wish R can be better at or where you want to see more growth in, in 2019 and beyond? I know it's a tough one. <laughs> yeah, no, I think I have. I mean, for me and my job specifically, where we're dealing, interacting a lot with kind of big data infrastructure. I mean, I think Wes McKinney talked about the Arrow project, and I think um, getting Romain Francois full time on that has been really huge. So doing the R bindings for Arrow, that'll just improve my personal life a lot because <laughs> we have kind of our own internal tooling built off of Vero. And right now I kind of have to switch to Python and I've learned, you know, my preferred way of doing that from our studio, but you know, it would be really nice to get that infrastructure going so that I could interact directly from R. So, um, I'm super excited that our studio is putting their weight behind it, both by kind of sponsoring Ursa labs and also by, um, hiring Ramon, having him work basically full time on it from what I understand. So that's what I'm most excited about. Um, you know, and then, I mean, just seeing the tidyverse continue to mature, I think that having that uniform API layer or not API layer, but like kind of like opinionated API interfaces for the data set. I mean, that's just been something over the past, you know, has matured a lot and definitely made my life better. So it's fun to see that continuing to grow. Very good. Very good. Thanks. Um, yeah, I think graphics for me would probably be where I'm excited to see things. So Thomas Lynn Peterson has just um, joined the R Studio team, which is great. And he's focusing on improving graphics. So I was speaking to him earlier. He said that he's they've, on his branch of Grid, which is what, what GDuplot is built on. He's now worked on some stuff to get it three times faster. So that's oh, like, that's huge. That's huge. Yeah. Um, but there's still like lots of... He said there's no major bottleneck, but... Yeah. Anyway, so he's he's working on that, and that I think is just really exciting because up until that point, it was basically Paul Murrell, who um, is this one researcher in New Zealand who's working on that whole project. You know, so it's nice to have like some more attention on that, which is great. Um, the other thing I think that I've been enjoying seeing is the growth of things on like non-standard valuation and how to do that. So it's like, and so that's like the the interface into the tidyverse and how you can do um, like programming with it. But uh, I'm enjoying seeing them like grapple with this because it's a really abstract, really tricky problem to explain. I think yes. a lot of people have had different goes at explaining it. And what I've been really enjoying is that the whole team from the start has been like, look, this is actually just really hard to explain. And we'll admit that it's hard to understand and we don't know how to teach this properly. But they've like seen them come around to different ways to explain that has been really cool. So I think that's what I'm really looking forward to. And just like seeing, I guess, what comes out next, I think. I know Dave Robinson had a tweet a little while back where he was like, it's going to be like the wild, wild west. We were just like slinging up packages and, you know, like, <laughs> and, you know, like, and now like, I feel like the, I don't know, I feel like the room for a new package, like, like the niches is like, they're kind of getting smaller. So like, I, I don't know. I'm just kind of curious to see what's going to happen and excited about like who's going to develop what. 
Yeah, no, it's a, it's a great time to be following the community. And I'm admittedly a bit biased towards the shiny stuff because that's like part of my big part of my day job. So the production stuff that Joe talked about, shiny tests, shiny load test, um, profiling, these are all things that are going to make myself as a shiny developer um, for my day job much, much easier and be able to teach others along the way. But getting into the tidyverse principles, the fact that we can hook the traditional D plier, you know, workflow with what Max Kuhn is doing with tidy models and some interesting stuff from the reporting side that, that Richie Owen is working on with GT and other things. We're all going to be able to stitch this together and not have to jump through a different API like framework for like getting that table out of that result. So I feel like we're, we're on a cusp of really great things. So it's, it's cool that we're all, we're all geeked about this and it's going to help our day jobs to boot. So it's going to be great. Um, yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that, actually, because the, the parsnip and um, uh, recipe stuff yes. from Max Kuhn, I'm super excited about it as well. I feel like I'm kind of just remembering like what I've seen most recently. Yep. <laughs> but um, yeah, that's going to be huge um, for you know, my work as well. Yeah. And even like some of the other stuff you were mentioning, like, like some of the, um, our open size stuff that's coming out with like, um, the image magic wrapper thing. Right, so like, right. yeah, just seeing like a lot of new areas and like interesting. I mean, I don't think most people would have thought like kind of advanced image processing in R would be a thing, but it's, oh, it's definitely a thing. I yeah. even use that. In I use it yeah. a lot. Yep, yeah. Yep. I, I told Karthik the, um, I don't know, founder or like <laughs> chief guy, <laughs> our open side. He, um, yeah, I was telling him how much I've been using that on like a day to day basis. So That's yeah, it's pretty awesome. cool. Yeah. 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 On that note, I actually use Image Magic like all, like all the time now to do yeah. stuff. Is every time like I crop something in like in Keynote or PowerPoint, like a little part of me is like, "There's got to be a better way." And then <laughs> I and know so exactly that, I yeah, feel. Yeah. I, I can so now like I like I go in and I manually crop it with the script or whatever, and yeah, and it's like this feels much better. But um, yeah, um, I think he's actually working on a computer vision thing. You're in Ooms. Um, that's like like another project CV, so it could be interesting. Ooh, yeah, um, I'm already. Yeah, yeah, watch this space. I I watch a lot of things on GitHub, so I'm like, yeah, it's a little anyway. No, I know how you like, feel. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> like, I'm like, am I stalking everyone, or am I just like <laughs> making sure I'm up to date? <laughs> well, yeah, I know how you feel because I'm like, am I being too nosy here? But then other times, the some of the brilliant software engineers in our studio will be like, hey, you know, we want early adopters of these things. We want to make sure the mm. API is meeting your needs and in whatever industry you're coming from or your workflow. So. I'm going to be paying attention to things like GT and other stuff. So, yeah. I mean, it, it, I think it's encouraged, I would say. And yeah. page down is going to be really exciting. Oh, Have man, you, I know. Yeah, so this yeah. is like, so Yi Hui, she is, is, uh, is building, it's basically PD, it's LaTeX, but on in HTML, like using a CSS framework. So, basically, you can do things like equations and paging and printing from HTML, and you don't need to install LaTeX. Uh, and, yeah, it's going to be awesome. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. For yeah, sure. well, he's giving a talk about it, I think, today or tomorrow. Is that today or tomorrow? We better, we're, we better not miss it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah well, um, I, I, this is a huge thrill for me. I've been admirers of both of your podcasts since they began, and um, I hope we can, yeah, keep, keep the conversation going. We'll keep in touch, and next time at conferences, we'll meet up again. But uh, Yeah, but thanks yeah. for thinking of this. Yeah, I absolutely. Yeah. yeah, thank you, Nick. Thank you, Hillary. And, um, yeah, we'll be right back. All right, thanks so much, Eric. Yep, thank you, Nick. Well, that was a lot of fun. I certainly hope you enjoyed listening to that uh, short conversation. And to be perfectly honest, I could have talked for them for a lot longer than that. We just had some presentations to attend on that first day. So, no, I don't want to keep them too long. But um, lots of lots of great insights there. And, and we'll have links in the show notes to all of the kind of package names or other resources that were that were mentioned throughout that throughout that interview. Um it was really funny. I've tried to perfect my mobile setup for recording these interviews on site. And I, I think I pleasantly surprised both Hillary and Nick for had the had once we found the room to do the recording, I quickly got out my portable recorder, the two mics and the mic cables and <laughs> Hillary seemed fascinated by it. She took a picture of it and, and tweeted it out a little bit afterwards, but I think I've I think I'm getting better at that. So hopefully hopefully the audio quality was good and that you, you really enjoyed that. So so yeah, I uh, I'll mention again. This is just the beginning. I've got at least two other episodes to release that cover um, other um, interviews as well as other takeaways I have from our studio conference. 
So if you'd like to be up to date when Windows come out, um, the best thing to do is to go to our um, website, r-podcast.org slash subscribe. And those have the various links to get um, your to get the R podcast and your podcast uh, catching software of choice. And also, I will be on Twitter with sending uh, announcements when the episodes are posted. And for all the links to this episode, go to r podcastorg slash 26. And I want to mention I welcome all of your feedback. It has not gone unnoticed during the layoff. I've got lots of things that I want to I want to make the show better with. One piece of feedback in particular is asking about more shiny content. I have a lot more to say about that um, in the very near future, so stay tuned for that as well. So again, I want to thank all of you for even listening for the first time or coming back to listen again. And I'm going to put a wrap on episode 26. So until next time. End of line.